I recently spent five incredible days on a solo trip to Old San Juan, Puerto Rico, where I enjoyed time sailing offshore on a catamaran in those gorgeous blue Caribbean waters, taking hundreds of photos in the local neighborhoods, and drinking as many pina coladas as I could find. I started early on my first day in Old San Juan with coffee and breakfast at Café Cultura, a charming local cafe in the heart of the city. I enjoyed this delicious caramel latte along with this huge breakfast quesadilla before heading out to explore Old San Juan. My next stop was San Juan Gate, which was built by Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon back in 1533 to protect the city. Today, the San Juan Gate, which sits on a walking path overlooking the Caribbean, is one of the most recognizable structures on the island. I think San Juan Gate is the perfect stop in the morning before the crowds arrive. You can enjoy the peaceful ocean views, stop and view the nearby statues, and check out the old guard watchtowers, or maybe not because people definitely urinate in them, before heading over to Castillo San Felipe del Moro, or just El Moro as it is known locally. El Moro is a remarkable 16th century fortification and an UNESCO World Heritage Site. El Moro was built to protect Old San Juan from pirate invasions and has stood guard over the city for centuries. Today, visitors can explore its ramparts, dungeons, barracks, and watchtowers while learning about the history of Puerto Rican defense strategies. The huge lawn in front of El Moro is a popular place for local families to gather and for children to fly kites on windy days. Also, before you leave, don't forget to view the Santa Maria Magdalena Cemetery, which is a colonial era cemetery and the final resting place for many prominent Puerto Ricans. One of the things I observed and really appreciated after exploring Old San Juan for several days was how many squares, parks, and open spaces were preserved in the city. You'll come across dozens of these squares and small parks as you walk across Old San Juan. The squares not only add charm to the city, but also create gathering spaces for local events, which I'm told are quite common throughout the year. My next stop was the very photogenic Casablanca, which was originally constructed as a fortress in 1521, but eventually became the home of Ponce de Leon's family, though he himself would never live there. My favorite part was exploring the courtyards and lush gardens, which contained the original fountains and sculptures. The building itself has been carefully preserved to maintain its colonial style, and on the interior you'll find a museum housing 16th and 17th century artifacts. Next, I headed over to the Museum of the Americas, which was an unexpected surprise and ended up being one of my favorite stops during my solo trip to Old San Juan. The museum is located in old military barracks and contains several galleries, each focused on a different region or time period in the Americas. The courtyard of this building is also worth checking out and happens to be home to one of the best places in the city to try mafongo, one of the island's local dishes. Which brings me to the one activity you can't miss in Old San Juan, which is joining a local food tour. I've linked to the food tour in the description box below if you're interested. During the food tour, we got to sample several local dishes and desserts while also supporting locally owned restaurants. I book food tours often when I'm solo traveling. I think it's a great way to get to know the city, meet locals, and support the local economy, all while enjoying delicious local food. Another popular place to visit in Old San Juan is the Cathedral of San Juan Bautista, which is an impressive example of Spanish colonial architecture. The cathedral was built between 1521 and 1540 and is perhaps best known as the final resting place of Ponce de Leon, whose tomb is located inside the cathedral. The next stop is Castillo San Cristobal, which I visited during an unexpected downpour with an intensity I've only ever experienced in other Caribbean destinations. Downpour aside, I had a great time exploring the fortress tunnels and dungeons trying to imagine what it might have been like to live here back in the late 1700s. When you visit here, be sure to explore all the different levels of the fortification. There's lots to see. Afterwards, head up to the top level for some epic views of the Caribbean and Old San Juan from the various watchtowers and lookouts. 
And this top level is a great place to get some photos on a clear day. They're not open for sunrise or sunset, but it's still pretty up there. And finally, you do not want to miss the bar and nightlife scene while in Old San Juan. The city is home to La Factoria, one of the top rated bars in the world, and Jungle Bird, which serves tiki inspired cocktails, including my personal favorite, the Painkiller. Also, since Puerto Rico is where the piña colada was invented, I made it a mission to try as many piña coladas as possible. This mission began at Barachina, which claims to be the exact location where this delightful frozen concoction was first created. After sampling these two piña coladas, I also tried this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.